Hey everybody, welcome back. Hey, you know it's uh I know it's been a little bit of time, but uh you know, everything happens in God's time. If we're living in God's time, you know there's uh one of the things that I, I guess that I've been just sitting here thinking about the last few days is you know, prophecy of things and people speaking and you know there's been many things i've been called out on people said uh, it's not true it hasn't come true and i said well you know you just got to give it time you got to give it god's time you know there, there is no time that you know god's not in a hurry and we shouldn't be in a hurry you know and again i just spoke about uh, these volcanoes and things that, that i've seen and just right before i left to come back out um I was sitting at the table and seen another one. And I said, man, we're going to have a massive volcano explode. And um, well, I, don't, I don't know if I said massive. I just said it was, I mean, maybe I did. I don't know. I, I just knew it was an extremely over abundance of um, lava coming from everywhere. And, uh. And sure enough, it just happened, people. And, you know, and I usually don't go on and do these prophecy fulfilled things because I'm not I'm not here to toot my own horn. I'm here to give what God gives, whether you believe it or don't believe it, it doesn't really matter. It it it, it, ma- it matters in the end what you believe and don't believe because what you believe, if it's not the right way to believe, then you'll believe in hell. If it's the right way, then you'll see the kingdom. You know, the problem is we put too many twists on the Bible and we try to make it work for us. God didn't intend it. He gave us the directions. He gave us a daily walking tool on how to get by and how to love and how to get through pain. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to go through trials. We're going to go through suffering. We're going to go through a lot of things. But... We lay it at Jesus' feet and things go by quickly. You know, again, I'm not coming against the American flag. I know somebody posted, and I think it was an email saying, Wow, man, I can't believe that you just pretty much came against the American flag. I served. And I said, well, first of all, did you read, listen to the other videos? Are you just going off of one video? Because if you're going off of one video, I don't think that's right. I really don't. And uh, to be honest, I, 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 instead of just coming out and asking me, you're going you're gonna to come at me like that. Okay, well, that's fine. That's your, that's your preference. That's how you want to do things. No problem. But like I say, I'm going to respond the best way I can, and that's through here. I didn't say, I said the American flag can't save me. If someone's burning the American flag... If someone pulled the Christian flag down and burned it, I would do the same thing. But I say this. Before you tear down or you kneel down and you turn your back on the American flag, I want you to find a Vietnam veteran. A Vietnam that went to Vietnam. And I'm not putting them higher than anybody else, but the crap they went through. And yes, war is war, people. But you look at the people that go into the service now, and I'm not, again, I'm not making nothing light of it, but I'm saying majority of you go in to better your career, to obviously get bonuses and stuff so when you get out, you're sitting pretty good where you can buy a new car, put money down on a home, and all that stuff. That's all I'm saying, and, and, and if you're being truthful, let's just throw, let's just roll the dice. The, the draft doesn't so much exist anymore. You know, I remember when I turned 18, and somebody says, "Well, you got to go down and sign up for the draft. If not, you can be arrested." Well, then they can arrest me. They can arrest me because if I wasn't good enough to go when I tried to go because I didn't have a diploma, then why am I good enough to go there and hold a gun? I might be the wrong person, especially back then. 
See, God knows what he's doing. We may not understand it at the moment. But the arrogance and the cockiness of what I what what I was about back then, I probably would have died over there. I probably would have chose death than to come back to this country. I'm not a big fan of the United States. Yes, I live here, and I know I've, I've said it in many videos. You want to come over here and spit on the ground, then go back to where you came from. You're gonna you're gonna enjoy America a lot better. I don't like the politicians. I think it's a circus and a carnival all wrapped into one. This has got to be the biggest joke I have ever seen in the way that we are suffering for it. It's ridiculous. They should be ashamed of themselves. But yet I don't hold grudge. I pray for them. And I love like Jesus tells me to love. But what I'm getting at is this. I want you to go over there with a Vietnam veteran and look at what they've, what they've seen. Now, granted, every war you see murder. You can't hold murder and what you did to either survive or to protect this country. I know some people say it's easier said than done, but I'll tell you right now. I almost killed a guy once. Well, actually twice. The one that I beat up so bad that I just disarranged his face and stuff. But there was another guy too. It was self-defense. I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad about... I really don't feel bad about the other one either. But I do today. I didn't then because of what I was in. I didn't know. I just knew how to fight. And I knew... That's it. That's what I was good at. So, go over there. Hey, we got war going on right now. Why don't you grab a vet? Why don't you grab a flag? Why don't you throw that damn flag down and turn your back on that flag? And when you're turning your back on that flag, make sure you're looking at that war zone. Why are you prancing around here, you NFL players and basketball players and baseball players and kids in school thinking it's it's the great thing to do because these athletes are doing it. Well, are these people in, in the industries, music, Hollywood? Let me tell you how corrupt it. And I'll get to that. You go over there and see that, and let me uh, gather that you uh, identify as a coward. You can add that to your Illuminati triangle and use your pronouns. I'm scared as hell. No, not yet. You're not. I'm sure you're scared. You won't be scared of hell until you walk in hell. I heard. I forget what state they were talking about, but I overheard a couple guys talking that a transgender went into a locker room and raped this girl so bad. Now, before you guys say anything, this boy that was portraying to be a girl at the moment, he was a wrestler. He worked out. He liked this girl, but the girl didn't want nothing to do with him. So he dressed up as a girl, went in, identified as a girl, and all of his buddies cheering him on and all this happy-go-lucky stuff, and then goes into the locker room and rapes this girl. Her whole life just changed. And I'll tell you who we got to blame for this. Parents. I've, been, I've done plenty of videos on watching what your kids are doing. Obviously, we're not watching videos and we're not getting anything out of them because this nonsense is walking on the streets. Well, I always knew they were going to be this way. Yeah, you sure did because you just spoke it into the existence and the devil loves you for it. Nelson, this is kind of hard to hear. Well, good. Sit back, grab your popcorn, and uh, enjoy it. Try not to choke on the things that I'm about to tell you. It's all fake anyways.
I, I, I honestly, I, you know, I sit back and I think about the kids and I think about everything that, uh, that has happened over the last few years. And one of the interesting things that I've always said in the demonic realm, the only thing that you have control of is your flesh. Why do you think all these people run around getting tattoos and all this stuff? Because they're ashamed of what they're doing. Look at Justin Bieber. Look what Diddy's done to him. Basically, pimped him out as a whore so he can have a music career. Well, now I don't. I just don't blame Diddy on this. I blame Justin Bieber because you chose to ride that wild styling, buddy. You didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do it. But now you're trapped. You're trapped in a cage. Like the rest of you will be. This ain't over, people. This is just the beginning of the nonsense coming. This is the stuff I keep telling you. If you're not strong now, you ain't, you're not going to be strong when the risen up happens and God calls his people upwards. You're not going to be able to survive. I've seen today what I call the spider creatures. I've seen this thing hop through trees over a fence. They're here. The time is coming. That's not scary enough. Has anybody been paying attention to the movies and the TV shows and all this nonsense? It's all about demons. It's all about nonsense, scary crap after scary crap. Well, good luck. Go out and watch them all. Joke around and waste your money. Make sure you use the pronouns. Somebody asked me the other day about Trump, what I felt like with Trump, and I said, uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, my thing is, is may God have mercy on all of them. The Clintons, Joe Biden, his son, uh, Kamala, she's just a puppet anyways, she's not really even a vice president, I mean, really, what has she done, you know, at least Michelle Obama, you look at Melania, at least, they were out doing stuff, trying to change things, what has Kamala done, I, I, please somebody comment and let me know, because I really have not really heard much about her. Oh, she was going down to the border. Somebody said she finally did. I doubt it. I don't think she did. What would be the purpose of it now? We got more ignorance. We got more ignorance going on today than we ever have. I remember when the Lord told me. And I was reading a tablet the other night. And on that, he said, soon your border wall will not even hold them. They will come underground. And they will plant themselves all around for a takeover. Maybe they are going to take, maybe they are going to strike. Wouldn't surprise me. Do I think Joe Biden's a real president that's running right now? No, because I've seen too many pictures and I've seen too many newscasts with him standing there and you see him turn. I've never seen skin people roll like this. And you can clearly tell it's a mask. I spent many years in a haunted house. 
we did dress rehearsal before we opened, any new person that's never done it, we taught them how to turn and how to move so people wouldn't be able to tell if they got into the light areas of the scene, they would not be able to tell it's a mask. There's ways to do it. I mean, look at the Nightmare on Elm Street. How many people actually knew that Freddy Krueger was actually wearing a mask in a couple of the movies? It wasn't all the latex and all the stuff that he normally did. I think it's Robert England, I think was his name, that played Freddy Krueger. He also played in The Visitors, the, the one in the 80s. He, he was an actual visitor, so... What didn't surprise me one bit when I found out that he was the one that was playing Freddy Krueger. But I think he played a good you know, a visitor guy. You know, last week, there was a death in one of the kids passed away. And it was like pulling teeth to get someone to answer me. I didn't end up going to the services. But yet, I had the obituary sent to me. And now I raised this boy from the age of, I think he was just turning three. And when finally, when I was out of his pitch, out of the picture with him. I think he was like 16, 17, somewhere in there. And, uh, didn't even mention. I mean, he could have at least mentioned. Not that I needed it. But then again, you're dealing with hate. So I look at it this way. Maybe... I mean, I did talk to him quite a bit afterwards. We were supposed to go to dinner and stuff, and never did. And I've always said, that you, you write me out of your life, and that's on you. But you know, think about it. Only thing the devil was trying to do was get a reaction on it. Because then somebody else posted, you know, he was love and all this, no drama. Only drama I see is the clowns that stand over there. Because they don't like the truth. They don't they don't want to hear the truth. They just want their example of the truth. That's what they want to hear. That's what this world wants to hear. Everybody wants to hear the easy street. This is how it's going to be. Everybody was, you know, you think about these uh, grocery stores that have the self-checkouts. I said it from the beginning. These things are just going to take away people's jobs, and it did. Now they're going to cancel them out. And it has to be. It has to get us used to this home delivery or this drive-up. And then eventually the drive-up stuff, they keep adding more and more, so... Uh, they're not going to need store employees. There was a steel factory. I, I think, I don't know if it was a factory or not, but it had to do with steel. 900 employees got let go in Cleveland and Ohio. Un unbelievable. 900 people. Anybody ever pay attention, like when you're traveling and you're driving and uh, you drive at nighttime so there's not a lot of people out so you can actually make better miles because you don't have a lot of stop and go and all that and have to deal with traffic? You ever notice how much traffic's on the road these days? Are you just so used to just seeing the same things every day you don't pay attention anymore? How many of you really care if they're going to shut down stores and you can have it delivered to your house or go pick it up however long that's going to last well good I hope you don't mind because at the end 
it's uh, that's exactly what you're going to do anyways. You're going to shut down the grocery stores, and you'll 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 have a certain amount of food that will come to you for the number of people that's in your house. I think about that a lot with the pantry. You know, if it's this many people, they get this much food. If it's this many, they get that. You know, even the pantries are training people for this. And I, I, I stand there a lot and a lot of stuff I don't say. All we're doing is training people to be used to what's going to happen. Look at the times when all that bath salts and all this stuff was going crazy and these people were eating fingers off of their children or eating flesh off of people's faces. They call them zombies. Look at all the zombie shows we have. Walking Dead, Night of the Living Dead, You're Dead, I'm Eating You, and I'm Hungry, and You Look Like a Pork Chop. So you're on my plate tonight. Sounds pretty nasty, don't it? But that's going to be reality. And then you get the people that think they're going to wait until Jesus is standing up in them clouds, and then they're going to go at that time. And, and repent of all their sins. Let me know how that works out for you too. Sad people. This is really disgusting anyway. This whole world. We have so much hatred. We got so much skin color hate. We have hate against other people. People hate wars. Man, we've been having wars for hot, for, since the beginning of time. I mean, look at it. It's a mess. History, we're supposed to learn from it. No, we don't. We just keep repeating the same things over and over and over. The devil's rising. A lot of you are going to be deceived. You know, people walking around doing the devil horn. Yeah. Long live rock and roll. But I'm a Christian. Uh huh. I didn't hear Jesus running around screaming, I'm going to kill you and uh, smoke the dope and all this nastiness. Funny how the Bible doesn't say any of that. We got all these signs right here in front of us. What if... Uh, a lot of you that think the Bible's nonsense, and a lot of you that don't believe in anything, even the ones that think they believe in Christ, but you're so, so much asleep. What if I was to say, hey, we're going on a field trip, and I'm going to need you all to put this chain around you, and I'm going to padlock it, and I'm going to padlock you, just like they did back in the chain game, and we're all going to go straight into hell. Because the more pain you're in, the more power and authority and the, the beast Get. Now 
and that's just the beginning of it. I'm going to give you a grand tour of everything I've seen. And what if I walked up and said, okay, here you go. Here's the keys. They're all yours. Well, wait a minute. You didn't say you were going to leave us. I don't have to leave you. You left yourself. You didn't need the Grim Reaper to come get you. You were already there. Angel Death. You might as well just walked up and hopped right on in through the gates. Because a lot of you, that's all you're doing. Good against evil. That's all we've had our whole lives. Good cowboys wore white, the bad ones wore black. Go figure that one. Devils loves the darkness and Jesus was always in the light. <laughs> Makes you wonder, don't it? It's up to you. We don't have a voice in it. And they know we won't use it. I was at the pantry a while back and the situation went, went sideways and I went up there and when I came back over person said, now this is supposed to be a godly person, said, you better stop doing that. They'll come back with guns. And I turned around and looked at her and said, I don't care. They can't do nothing to me. They can't kill me. Yeah, they can if they shoot you. No, I'm, I'm not going to die. Death is hell. I will live in peace and joy. She just stared at me. I have that much confidence and that and that much faith. Am I perfect? No. Do I repent? Yes. The idea is not to. And I try very hard. I try and I examine the days that's coming. I try to catch the the whispering of the people before the, they get too far into a conversation with me. Sometimes I just sit back and let the spider do its job. Catch him. Like I told a guy once, he said, man, I cannot get rid of these mice. I said, well, what are you using? Jeez, put them on a trap. What you doing it with? Well, that's what I was taught as a kid. They put peanut butter, this and that. You're doing it wrong. Well, how do you do it? I said, you go around, you put a bunch of cheese, blocks of little cubes of cheese around. You let the mice come and get it. You do this for a couple days. Are you kidding? I'm not doing that. I'm not wasting my cheese. No, seriously. And on the third or fourth day... You put the cheese on the mechanism, on the trap, but you don't set it. Well, that's stupid. They're going to get another piece of cheese. You're, you're right. Now, on the next night, you're going to put that cheese right back on there, but you're going to put a little bit of peanut butter on there, too, and you're going to set that trap. And the next morning, you're going to come downstairs or wherever these traps are, and guess what you're going to have? Dead. It's a day by day Satan's just killing you He lets you run around the cheese And take all you want But there's a consequence And it's your spirit and soul That he's coming after People start praying for you He's coming after you He'll make you so dang gone depressed 
you'll want to take your life. How can you tell if someone's depressed? They might not shower. They might not brush their teeth. They might not their hygiene, but brushing their hair. Uh, they might just simply say, how are you today? Oh, I'm good. Or I'm okay. They, they don't talk a whole lot anymore. They could have been a talk to, talkative person that don't necessarily talk anymore. You know, there's a lot of signs of depression. But I can tell you one person that can heal you of it. Or you got it. The Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one. I can heal you of depression. I can walk you through it. Depression's just a grain of sand, people. One little grain of sand. That's all depression is. We make it into this biggest mountain that we can think of. When the Bible says you can move a mountain, just tell tell the mountain to move over. We can. First of all, we got to identify the problem. It's us. Too many rules. Yeah, the devil don't have enough. The only rule he's giving you is I'm taking your spirit and soul and I'm going to let a demon take over your body. you believe people it's happening visions I've been having and some of the dreams I've been having. You know, and to be honest, I mean, I'll do whatever the Lord asks me to do. Do I really want to stay here and lead these people to this cage? Not particularly. I'll do it. Who am I to question either one of them? Well, you know, when you start questioning God and you start disbelieving, first of all, when you question God, you think you can do it better. How many of you know that? You're telling God that you're better than He is. Do it my way. You ever stop to think that maybe God's the one gave you your thoughts on how to do it? I don't take credit for anything. Unless I truly didn't get in a prayer, but then I just lifted up to God. I lifted up to Jesus. cops out today.
if I told you what I've just seen right now, I wonder if it would make a difference. See, people, that's what I deal with. Visions of things. And some of it is so horrifying. You would be surprised. Florida car. That's an old one there. <laughs> I'm noticing that the states, some fuel is higher than others. And every time I go to pump any kind of gasoline or fuel for the trucks, all I hear is people complaining. Complain, 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 complain. Instead of praying, 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 praying. I don't know. All I know is the time will come but you have to remember one thing the devil's going to come and claim some of his people too because he's not going to need them all he's just going to start shooting them right into hell same as God is rising them up the devil's going to be pushing many into the kingdom of hell Yes, it's their kingdom. Yes, you can come against it. But I'm going to tell you, they call hell a kingdom too. Look at the leaderships back in the day. Look at the kings. It was their kingdom, wasn't it? Some of you act like you get surprised over some of the stuff I talk about. Everybody's prepared for this three days of darkness and people were preparing for the eclipse and power was going to go out and all this stuff and how to survive. But nobody was preparing if it was the time Jesus was coming. Nobody was preparing for him. Well, maybe some of you. So I shouldn't really say nobody because I'm not really for sure if it uh, was nobody. I don't see a lot of people preparing for Jesus. You can hear it more and more and more. You know, I was thinking today there's an opportunity I could go on a six-day, three-day off program where I'm working. And you know, I was thinking, well, you know, it'd be nice to get back into church. You know, it's been a while. That's why you're talking like this, Nelson, because you haven't been in church. Now, I don't need a building to go to to worship Jesus. I don't need a building. When I got the back of my cab, the, the, the sleeper berth, I can kneel down there. I can, I can put on my prayer shawl and just sit there and pray and pray and pray and pray. I can read his word. Sometimes I think it's better, so I ain't got to see all the fakeness. A lot of nonsense talk in church. Lots. A lot of people go in there all for the wrong reasons. I've seen it all, people.
who, you know, I, I, it doesn't matter what the person's name was, but um, I'm trying. I was trying to f- remember what they said in that email. Something about I sound like I'm a very negative, judgmental person. I said, no, I don't. I I disagree with you, and, and I rebuke what you said. I'm not. I'm not going to allow that to hold over top. of First of all, I don't think I'm negative. I might speak in different ways that it's not for you because you don't want to hear the truth. You want to go to that easy listening, then go listen to jazz while the rest of us hears the truth. Somebody needs to speak it to you. While you walk down with rose-colored glasses on and you walk down the devil's pathway, you're going to wish you would have listened. But no, I I don't, I'm not a judge. I am not the one that sits on the high throne. Only God is able to do that. So, call it what you want. even, Even sending you the message back will explain to me what you see as negative. I'm a very man of very few words and I just throw it on the table and that's how I like to leave it. At least you don't got to hear a bunch of hogwash stuff down through that doesn't make any sense. But my thing is what amazes me is when they say I've watched many videos of yours and I see you as a negative person then if it bothers you so much, then why are you watching the videos? I don't, that's what I don't understand. There's people's videos that bother me because it's, it's disgusting what they're doing and what they're portraying. So why am I going to watch it to be disgusted and discouraged and get upset by something that they're saying or doing I just don't watch it. You know, a certain person comments a lot, and she has done it a lot on here. This channel is not for everybody. God will send them. Just not saying in her exact words, but that's exactly how I take it. Am I upset by the negative thing? No. All my life I've heard people tell me I was negative. And I just give up trying to explain it to them. I've had people ask me, are you ever happy? Yeah. But there is another one I do apologize to you. I do. Uh, I I have been extremely busy. Uh, No, I have not did the videos that I was talking about, I was going to do. And what I do apologize for is I don't recall saying when we moved into the house that I was going to do a video of the house if you guys would like to see the house and and, and it's truly gone you know I tell everybody even Darlene tells people you know for the first place we ever went into that Darlene never wanted to change the wall color I can't paint anymore I can't see that good and it gets runs and stuff like that I used to be a really good painter worked in apartment maintenance and stuff like that for years so yeah we had a paint department so I was pretty good I would go in there edge it all out I'd paint the ceilings first edge it all out and then I'd come back and just paint the rooms and 
either way, it's up to you. But hopefully this time in, we can have time. If not, I'm, I'm still going to do the one uh, that I've been wanting to do for a while. And I am going to bring some of the tablets out with me and start reading that stuff. And I'm just going to read it straight off the tablet, people. That's exactly the best way that, that, that I, I can think about doing it. So you might hear a lot of stuff repeated. It's because he repeats a lot of stuff to me sometimes. You know, originally doing these videos, all I was going to do was read the tablets and that was going to be it. Well, God had a different way to do it and he chose me to do it. So he's got to be able to use it what makes sense to me and, and there is a lot of people that it's helping especially when you bring your everyday life that somebody else is living out here in this world too and going well, wait a minute this guy can do it I can do it yeah you're right if God can forgive me he can forgive anybody and I mean that truly I don't deserve to be here, and I sure don't deserve God's grace, people. I don't, but I am thankful for it. I am thankful that he went to that cross and paid the price, and paid that price. And I'm just speaking about me now, not, not anybody else, just me. He paid that price, he took those nails for me. All that I have done. Man. Man, oh man, oh man. I don't deserve that love. I truly don't. All my life, I've always done for somebody else. If somebody would say something, even, even if I had plans, I would stop whatever I was doing to go do something for someone else. Because I never felt important. I never felt like anything that I wanted to do in life really mattered. And you know what the crazy part about it is? Uh, the hardest part of it is... I don't even talk to other people anymore. That's the stuff that gets me. So today when I can't move that well, it's like walking up and tapping a tree. Once it can't produce the sap anymore to make syrup, it's no good. Sometimes I, you know, I have feelings. People say stuff sometimes and it hurt me. And it does hurt me. I never say much about it. But I'll tell you this. Many nights I do cry. Many nights I'm in extreme pain. That keeps me up and I'm really crying over that. But you'd be surprised... I have to be very careful because depression doesn't affect me the way it affects other people. Depression brings a monster out of me. girl earlier drift all the way across young girl and steadily was on her phone didn't even know that she was drifting across 
when she finally, when I was getting ready to blow the air horn at her, then I was thinking I shouldn't do that. I let me just hit the city horn, which is the regular horn like you have in your cars. We call it a city horn. I was getting ready. I was getting ready to blow that because I didn't want to start her horse so bad because she was about to hit my steer tire, which could have been a bad day for both of us. Because if she would have hit that hard enough, that turned me into her, I could have went right over top of her car. She looks up at me, and I'm just shaking my head. And she, I mean, the look on her face when she was coming that close to that tire. That girl was scared. I would like to say she'd probably never do that again, but I would, I'm would. i not a betting man, and I sure wouldn't bet on that horse. That's what the devil wants, distraction. He wants us depressed. He wants us angry. He wants us where he wants us. He don't want us to do anything for God. When you're doing, getting ready to do something great for God, the devil coming and knocking. How many times have you heard people say, man, the devil's really, really tempting me today, or really coming after me today? And people were saying, oh, that, you can't think like that. Christian, the devil don't come. Well, then you, you better go back and read the Bible. The devil doesn't have to come after you if you're not doing anything for God. He has no worries. When people start praying for you out loud, the devil hears it, and what do you think happens? And people become sick. He's not about to lose. Anyway, he's invested. You're his property. He doesn't need you. When this rapture takes place, he's going to just start throwing people into hell. Because he don't need them no more. They have no purpose for him. Why does he need you here? It's going to be interesting. Well... There was a lot more stuff I wanted to say, but I think I'm just going to hold off on it. So, give you some food for thought. As always, it doesn't matter. Leave a negative comment. Uh, leave a positive one. Burn up my email. I don't care. I don't take that wrong, people, that I haven't got back to even some people. I, I actually got your, I actually moved the emails in, into a separate file so I can go in there and just read them there because there's so much stuff that comes in these emails. My gosh, it's like, I seen one the other day. I was like, when did this come? Then I had to go back and look at it. Some of them are like February, March. Some in January. I'm like, my goodness. There's a couple of people I gotta reach out to just see how they're doing, and uh, I haven't heard from them in a bit, and uh, just make sure. I always like to make sure people are okay. I never was like that, but I am today. I just want to know people are okay. It's the worst feeling in the world to know when you just somebody just disappears. But, day by day, hour by hour, is what we do. So, God bless you guys. Hopefully this video uh, gives you something to really think about. kind of like a wrap up of a lot of videos that I've been talking about but I don't know kind of lost words sometimes but I will finish this what I originally the other stuff that I wanted to talk about 
but I, I don't like to overpower stuff sometimes. I know sometimes I can go on for hours talking about stuff, but when I feel really deep about something, I, I don't like to put too much onto it because I, I don't want you to lose what I'm trying to get at. And what I'm trying to get at through all this is stop letting the devil put fear. We're about to see some crazy days coming. And we're going to need each other more than what people think. So that being said, till the next one.